You know when some people compare games to Dark Souls or Bloodborne, they'll call it a Souls type of game? And how those Souls type of variations are a genre unto themselves? What I wish became its own genre are Colossus type games. Variations of the original Shadow of the Colossus, where you roam a big open world, searching for enormous beasts to kill. I know I have fought the bosses in Shadow of the Colossus close to 20 times each. Unfortunately, nobody has taken up that task in the past 16 years. Save for one team. Back in 2015, No Matter Studios announced Pray for the Gods, a game that was so obviously influenced by Shadow of the Colossus that it makes the Asylum look like a font of Hollywood originality. That's not a criticism, by the way. That's the whole point of this game. People like me wanted to slay more giant beasts, and No Matter gave us that opportunity. They just had to take the foundational gameplay of Shadow of the Colossus and infuse it with enough originality so that they would avoid copyright. I, along with many people, waited patiently for this game for the last six years. It finally released version 1.0 last Wednesday, and I played through the whole thing. Does the game live up to expectations? Is this game the next Shadow of the Colossus? Um, well, it depends on what you envision the next Shadow of the Colossus would be. Does Pray for the Gods match the archetypal perfection of Shadow of the Colossus? Does its music, its story, you know, inspire that same level of awe? Well, no. But I don't think we should have expected a team of three dudes to provide that to us. What we should have expected was the opportunity to slay giant beasts. Do we get to do that? Yes. Is it awesome? For the most part, yes. If you're a huge fan of Shadow of the Colossus, should you pick this game up? Unequivocally, yes. The game is not without its faults, and we'll get to those in a moment, but nonetheless. Pray for the Gods is a loving and sometimes thrilling tribute to one of the greatest games ever made. Before I go into greater detail, remember to give this review a like. If you like it, it's free, and it helps out my channel more than you know. Now, let's start with aesthetics. Graphically, the game is fine. Nothing special. The graphical quality is what you would expect for a game made with the Unity engine. However, in regards to art direction, I think the game does quite well. Remember how the art direction in Shadow of the Colossus would inspire a certain level of introspection and curiosity? Like, what happened to the world around us? Why is it so empty and dead? Why is this building here? Why is that monument there? The developers of Pray for the Gods understood that aspect of Shadow of the Colossus and how it contributed to its overall magic, and they did their best to replicate it here. Though I won't say it inspires the same level of wonderment, No Matter Studios did an admirable job with their world design. One thing they did excel at, in my opinion, is the design of the giant monsters. They look awesome. In fact, I'll say that the monsters in this game did one thing better than the Colossi did. They made me feel terrified for my life. Though obviously all the boss fights in Shadow of the Colossus are superior, and even the developers of Prey would say so, I have to say that I was never terrified by the Colossi. The monsters in Prey, however, do inspire some level of fear via their decrepit demeanors. That fear enhanced every major battle. Moving on to the gameplay. To repeat what I just said a moment ago, the giant monster fights are great for the most part. Again, I'll get to my criticisms in a moment. Just like in Shadow of the Colossus, the aim is to try and figure out how to get onto the giant beasts first, and then find their weak points. Though it's not as difficult to figure out how to get onto the bosses and find their weak points like it was sometimes in Shadow, it's still roughly as thrilling. The feeling of dealing that final blow to your enemy, when the tension in your vagus nerve releases and the dopamine rush blurs your vision, few games are able to give you that sense of accomplishment without driving you nuts first, like with the aforementioned Dark Souls. This game, like the original Shadow of the Colossus, provides the thrills while subtracting many of the headaches. I also gotta give the developers credit for designing the boss fights in a way that allows the player a bit more freedom. In Shadow, there was usually one or two official ways that you could get on top of a colossi, unless you're one of those few people that can play that game like a ninja. In Prey, there were a few bosses that permitted multiple mounting strategies. 
Without spoilers, there was one boss that we've seen in the trailers for the game that flies through the air. I don't think the way I got on top of him was the intended way, but it was easily the most thrilling part of the game for me. Thank you, No Matter, for allowing that increased sense of freedom. But this isn't the only way that No Matter built upon the pre-established Colossus formula. See, in the original game, you would ride on your horse for like five minutes through secluded emptiness until you happen upon a boss. In Prey, there's the introduction of a survival element. Not only do you have to defend yourself against lower level NPCs, but you also have to gather resources. You have to hunt animals, gather firewood, and craft various materials. Best of all, searching for resources causes you to sometimes stumble upon points of interest, where you can find lore items and treasure. None of that ever happened in Shadow. Though I appreciated the simple ride to a boss in Shadow because it gave you time to peacefully reflect on the world, the bosses you fought, and the ones you will soon fight, the survival element in Prey is a welcome dynamic. That said, I know a lot of people won't appreciate that added difficulty, but you don't have to worry about that. The game not only gives you four basic difficulty options, but it also lets you determine how much the survival element will impact you. You can decide whether your weapons will degrade to the point of non-use, or if you will die from lack of warmth or sleep. These difficulty choices could have been better implemented though, and I will get to that in a second. One last thing before I move on to negatives. I said it in my Halo Infinite review, and I will say it again. Every game should have a grapple hook, period. Grapple hooks are like pizza. Add it to any situation and everything is just made better. The grapple hook makes everything better in Pray for the Gods. You can use it for world traversal or for when you're fighting the giant beasts, and it feels great. Don't worry though, it doesn't make everything easy. When fighting bosses, there are only very specific points that you can grapple onto. You can usually only access these points if you're accidentally thrown off a boss and you need to make a last ditch attempt to hang on. When you succeed in that attempt, it's both relieving and thrilling at the same time. So the gameplay is good, and the art direction is good, and based on those two elements, I would recommend Prey to longtime fans of Shadow of the Colossus. But what about those who never played Shadow of the Colossus? Well, I'm not sure. I don't say that because Shadow is obviously the superior experience and you should play that first, although that is part of the reason. I say that because Shadow had a larger team and a budget that allowed them to iron out some of the technical problems with their game. Prey did not have that, and unfortunately it does show in some respects. My biggest problem with this game has to do with the way the main character controls. Much of the time, controlling the main character feels way too slippery. Whether it's when she's doing something as simple as running, or when she's trying to stay still on a Colossus, it doesn't feel finely tuned. Unlike in Shadow, where if you fall off a Colossus, it was most likely your fault, there were times where I would fall off a monster and prey, not due to my lack of skill, but because the game's button input wouldn't work. Every time, I would know what to do in order to defeat a boss, but I would get thrown off because my character wouldn't hold on when I pressed the hold button. Or maybe I would try to stand up on a monster when I should have been able to, only to slide off. This leads to more than a few instances where the game feels really unfair. Thankfully, this didn't happen too often, but it happened a couple times with the second and seventh boss, and it happened a lot with the fifth boss. I knew where to go on the fifth boss and what to do when I got there, but it took me four or five tries before the game would let me. If you're like me and you have played a lot of Shadow, you'll be willing to look past these faults because we're just so enamored with the idea of slaying more giant beasts. But I wonder if the average population would be as forgiving. The addition of combat beyond the giant bosses could have been an interesting idea, but it doesn't add much to the overall experience in Prey. The lower tier enemies are very, very easy to kill. They're mostly just there to gather resources from. It's not a giant problem, but it does make me wonder what more they could have done there, especially in regards to some of the mini-bosses, which are clearly inspired by Souls-type games. These could have been cool challenges to help boost your stats before you go take on the big guys, but again, the idea just feels half-baked. There's nothing exciting about any of it. 
Also, if you do choose to embrace the survival elements of the game, there are times where it can become tedious. Like I said before, you have to look after things like stamina, sleep, and warmth. Stamina is easy enough to look after because you can hunt for food before a boss fight. However, if you start to run out of warmth, you better hope you have some potions at the ready. Otherwise, you'll have to stop fighting the boss for a couple of minutes to start a fire and get your warmth up. When this happens, any excitement you had suddenly grinds to a halt. This only happened once or twice for me, but I can easily see it happening a lot for those who aren't used to the Colossus formula. This sort of thing can be ironed out by adding difficulty sliders in an update. However, I'm forced to review the game as it is now, and right now, there are times when the survival mechanics feel tedious. This is just one example of it. If more time and attention had been given to things like upgrades, lower tier encounters, and the survival mechanics, and the developers had another six months to perfectly tune the controls, I would have no problem recommending this game to every type of gamer, regardless of their familiarity with Shadow of the Colossus. Unfortunately, those few criticisms do hamper the overall experience. The problem is that Pray for the Gods both shines and fails because of its comparison to Shadow of the Colossus. If you don't compare Prey to Shadow, then I feel that Prey's positive traits can become overshadowed by its negatives. The boss fights in Prey are great because they are close approximations to the Colossi fights. I wonder, though, if the fights in Prey give the same adrenaline rush to those who aren't familiar with Shadow. They certainly don't for those who didn't like Shadow, and yes, those people do exist even though we like to pretend they don't. If you don't like Shadow or never played it, I think the problem with the controls, the survival mechanics, and the journey to the monsters will turn a lot of people off. I think that people need to experience Shadow of the Colossus, fall in love with that, and then play Pray for the Gods. If they do that, then they'll feel elated playing Prey. The negatives will feel virtually irrelevant. I feel that if the developers continue to support Prey for the next year and address these criticisms through patches and updates, Prey can truly stand on its own. For now, I will always recommend people play Shadow first, and then choose whether or not to play Prey based on how much they liked Shadow. Thanks for watching everybody, sorry for the lack of game analysis videos by the way. My next video will be full on game analysis and it will be releasing early next week. It's just taken me so long to do because the game I'm analyzing is longer than a goddamn Tolstoy novel. Until then, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, a Quasi Kwanzaa, a Tip Top Tet, and a solemn dignified Ramadan. Now a word from my god my sponsor.